In my um, earlier career in working in children's media, having worked into the television industry for 15 years for the BBC, particularly working with children in, in uh, preschool and <laughs> 6 to 11 content, um, then I pursued uh, a personal interest in interactive media, which led me to work in games, and this idea of telling stories across platforms, um, and that there are many ways in which to engage with youth and, and the world at large and actually have impact with that kind of relationship that you can develop through interactive content. Um, and now at Games for Change, um, having uh, been in this position for a couple of years, we're expanding our work to include um, immersive media. And it was a natural extension for the work because so many game designers are moving into this new platform in which to tell their stories and interact with audiences. Um, a lot of uh, different uh, not-for-profit and foundation and government agencies and educators are also exploring immersive media as a way to engage with, um, with the public and helping change and change uh, the world to be a better place. So having an opportunity to come to this event, thanks to Lori and, and Catherine and, and uh, Michael for inviting me, we can explore how this uh, immersive media can help make the world a better place for our children. And um, in that context, I am presenting an optimistic view, which is great, because I'm an optimist at heart. Um, and I hope today, um, or this, this, uh, the, the slides that I share and the ideas that I share, um, help spark some ideas about where you can envision these, these realities in 10 years uh, from now. I'm not, I'm not coming at this as a researcher or as an academic. I'm coming at this as somebody who looks at the, this industry and this movement and this media from a kind of 20,000 foot view. Um, I work across a lot of sectors um, and come across a lot of great uh, innovators who are, are using this technology. So that it's in that context that I've collected these ideas. Um, first of all, um, we have their optimistic view where this is a world of wonder uh, for children and an opportunity. Um, one which that can allow uh, children to embody possibilities in ways that um, they haven't before. Um, they can explore futures for themselves, um, role playing. Uh, they, can they can experience career paths that they may not have known was available to them. Um, they can try things out. They can embody these, uh, these different vocations um, in a different kind of context. They can fly planes. They can build cities. Um, they can see um, and experience um, role models in ways that are that immerse them. Uh, this is an example uh, from Filament Games called uh, Explore It, which is called Breaking Boundaries of Science, and it's a project where you can uh, visit Marie Curie, um, Grace Hoppen, Hop, uh, Hopper, and um, and and learn from them and see what their lives were as a as a scientist in their labs or in their um, offices where they, they did their work. Um, when I, I, I do want to say that as I looked into the future, I actually saw things that are happening now. And for me, the future also includes um, a time where there's the distribution challenges are solved, the research has been done. We can assume that the, 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 the content that's been created for kids are being made with ethical decisions and with the right subject matter experts at the start. Um, and with those opportunities, we can, we can start building products that increase um, an opportunity to build global citizens in our world, bringing the, the world together through immersive realities um, for students and for youth. Um, they can meet classrooms in China in a virtual space. Um, they can explore and learn about the mi uh, migration pr pr uh, problems and visit people in uh, refugee camps. Um, look what life is like for um, in cultural uh, festivals around the world. And again, I'm bringing you to an example that's happening now. So this is a, a, a shot from Clouds Over Sidra that was created by the UN, Gabor Aurora and Chris Milk, and it gives you an opportunity to visit a refugee camp in Jordan um, and see uh, a 12-year-old's experience. Um, and it is an opportunity for people to, to get into a world where they've never been able to see from a point of view. Um, another example is Global Nomads Group that brings um, ex the unfortunate situation in Armenia uh, and the genocide into classrooms and help facilitate conversations both with students from the U.S. and also from around the world to talk about this issue. Um, these experiences aren't standalone experiences, they're one that foster conversations 
and with curriculum around it. Um, and so you can, uh, but you can meet and you can see all of this in a, in a virtual environment. Uh, we talked about um, VR being a way to go see places that are far out of reach, right? Google Expeditions are doing this. The tourism industry is doing this. Imagine places, uh, ways that children in the, from their classrooms or from their homes can see faraway places and cultures, visit India, maybe even visit space, right? That was beautiful, the worldwide um, telescope, but imagine if that went a step further and became an immersive experience. Um, where um, equity um, is possible, and people from all over the world has access to this. Um, you can use, uh, this is an example of now, augmented reality and do time travel through experiences as you, as you um, explore the world. Um, I don't, has anyone ever tried the experience called Tree? It's beautiful, right? You, are, you immerse yourself as a tree growing in the rainforest. And you start as a seedling, oh, two minutes, oh no, um, as a seedling, and you not only have the experience of growing, then you also see from a distance once you're grown uh, the, a fire in the rainforest and how the destruction is happening. And it is a, a personal experience that you would never have otherwise. Um, talked a lot about immersive learning and possibilities of bringing um, uh, the human body, how students can see the human body in ways that they would never be able to explore before, science labs. Um, exploring the world and understanding uh, uh, dimensions and around, around them. I think uh, Shell Games is here talking about Hollow Lab, how to create a safe dry lab in, uh, without exposing students to um, younger students to uh, fire and things that, that they're just not quite ready for. Robotics, getting, having kids be able to build in a, a virtual space when they don't have physical uh, materials. They can't get the physical materials in their classrooms, but they can within um, a virtual environment. Advancing healing, thinking about the ways not only that, um, uh, that virtual reality can calm anxieties and help children get through a hospital environment, but they can help with rehabilitation, physical, physical advancements in, in their healing. Um, virtual reality and how it interacts with autism and kids on the spectrum. There's a lot of great research about how kids are, are reacting to these kind of environments. Um, and perhaps even cognitive uh, healing and development and, um, and cognitive growth. And are any of you aware of the work that Dr. Adam Ghazali is doing at UCSF, right? He has built a video game, they have a whole lab, um, Neuroscape lab, where they are building video games that can help um, young ADHD patients um, uh, to deal with um, certain aspects of the illness and um, are going through, I think they're probably year three of clinical trials. It's um, been submitted to the FDA for approval and I envision a world where we can have alternative uh, medicine, electronic medicine, through video games or virtual reality and this is in our future and we can get there. Um, this is what the video game looks like. Um, and finally, creative expression, right? I don't think we've talked much about, uh, about kids as creators using virtual reality, whether they're making art within this, this environment or making music, right? Creating, collaborating, or getting behind the camera and learning how to code. And this becomes part of their STEM computer science uh, uh, pathways. Uh, so I see there is um, multiple and endless opportunities for uh, for virtual reality, augmented reality, mixed reality, to touch students' lives, young people's lives, um, across the whole path, a whole, a whole way of interaction. And there, I, thank you.